What is up, Slayers? Welcome back to the Slayers Den. Thank you guys again so, so much for joining me. Today we are playing, yes, a mono white life gain deck. And the reason I'm playing this is because I've played enough alchemy by now to realize that the format is so wide open right now. It's crazy. And if you want a deck that's going to help you rank up and take down a good chunk of the current meta, which is pretty free floating right now, mono white life gain is the deck to play. Now in the brand new alchemy format, which we are playing there are two brand new alchemy cards that i really want to showcase because they are amazing in mono white and then they've rebalanced a couple of cards as well so i'll go over that really quickly and then we'll get into some awesome gameplay so the first brand new card from alchemy is this card angel of unity for two mana a one three flying life link whenever angel of unity enters the battlefield or you cast a party spell choose a party creature card in your hand and it perpetually gets plus one plus one this is bonkers because it'll give all of our clerics plus one plus one and then this stat too so anytime you play another party spell and you still have that creature and you can just keep stacking plus one plus one counters and end up having a really thick creature for like two mana when it finally resolves the fact that it is an angel cleric is also awesome with a three toughness booty allows us to bump our life total with righteous valkyrie pretty quickly allowing us to really maximize this whole life gain thing the other new card i wanted to feature in this deck is inquisitor captain it's so so good three colorless white this is a three three vigilance cleric it says when Inquisitor Captain enters the battlefield, if there are 20 or more creature cards with mana value 3 or less among cards in your graveyard, hand, and library, you seek two creature cards with mana value 3 or less, put one of them onto the battlefield, and shuffle the other into your library. So this is great. Four mana, you get two bodies. Basically, we're going to be wanting this to bring out something as powerful as a Righteous Valkyrie out, or we could get one of our creatures that really rely on life gain, like Voice of the Bless or Hallowed Priest, and just start bumping them up that way. Now, some of the rebalance cards that they featured in alchemy are cosmos elixir it basically does the same thing except now you get to scry one when you gain the two life which is super important because initially just getting two life feels really good but that scry one actually makes a huge difference when you're trying to find threats the other card they rebalance which is actually pretty interesting to me i'm not sure that the original version was too busted in any way but basically it just turns faceless haven into a 3-3 instead of a 4-3 so we're gonna try this out as well and since this card was rebalanced, we want to try it along with the amazing Book of Exalted Deeds Faceless Haven combo. We've got a couple of copies of that. This is kind of like our last minute, like we don't have any other answers left in our deck. We just have to win. The Book of Exalted Deeds combo is still super powerful, still works. Not only that, we're going to be gaining so much life that we actually get to use its initial ability of if we gain three or more life in a turn, we create a 3-3 white angel creature token. So yeah, lots of good stuff in this deck. But that's it. Super easy easy peasy i just wanted to play this one because i want to get this one out to you guys you guys need to see this deck in action because it is super powerful i've tried it in testing and i was just racking up win after win after win and i would be remiss if i didn't share this one with you guys as you are starting to learn the alchemy format as you are starting to craft cards this one is definitely a banger so let's get into some awesome gameplay without further ado let's play some magic the gathering Freak King. I'm the Freak King, guys. All right, uh, we'll keep this. Having the uh, Cosmo Elixir is kind of nice. Um, Thalia also pretty solid. Stop the opponents from doing too much too early. We do have that fourth land for um, Cosmo's Elixir, which is also pretty nice. All right, uh, let's go and play Thalia. Sweet. It's the end step. Their creatures get pretty huge. I'm wondering if we can outpace them. Sweet. All right, so we play this and let's play an Angel of Unity. Make the voice of the blessed a little bit bigger. So they can now play a big dragon, which I think if we do our game plan right, dragons shouldn't be that big of a deal. Okay. Play planes number four, which is great. Right here. 
Then we play Voice of the Blessed, which should get pretty thick. Nice. Could have another Dragon Fire here. Fading Hope. Okay. Fading Hope it is. And we're gonna do no attacks on the turn. But uh, yeah, let's figure this stuff out. Opponent's on double unexpected windfall, so they're they're trying to get as much gas as possible. Maybe Fearsome Welp was really their only dragon at the time. Maybe one other big dragon in their hand, but just a handful of this kind of stuff. You know, is it goodness? Draconic Intervention, okay. So we eat. Take one. All right, let's play this and... I think I wouldn't mind playing Voice of the Blessed Hallowed Priest here. Just to get some threats on the board and then Cosmos Elixir could, you know, hook us up maybe. Moon Veil Regent, oh uh, sure. Oh, uh, sure, sure, sure. Okay, we're going to play good old Cosmos Elixir. We're going to do no attacks. Gain a couple of life. Sure, I'll take one of those. Second Moonvale Regent. And another Fearsome Whelp. Okay. So they're kind of just filtering through their... Uh, through their stuff, trying to find some answers. I'll take the five. Meanwhile, we're going to play Righteous Valkyrie. And, um, I think we just go next here. Let me see. Do no attacks, end the turn, just gain a couple of life points. Don't think I need that. I think as long as they don't have a way to get rid of Cosmos Elixir, we should be in the game for a while. I might have, I, it might have been a good re uh, good thing to keep that planes. This is actually way better. <laughs> okay, yeah. This uh, this particular match was going to get really out of hand because everything would have gained us so much life there, and this was going to get huge. So, GG. Up on it. Okay. Um, well, I mean, it looks like a pretty decent hand on paper. We'll hold on to it just because, uh, you know, Cosmos Elixir just does so much work. We cast everything else in our hand pretty much. Play the planes. Next turn, we can get an uh, impassioned orator in there, maybe. Although I suspect, uh, probably going to see some kind of uh, burn spell in here. Um, so we'll play Impassioned Orator first, try to get the Frostbite out of their hand, maybe. Though they only do have one of those bad boys, aka the Snowlands. Alright, so we're going to take four here, it looks like. Uh, no blocks. This, and, uh, huh. I think we play Valkyrie here. No attacks. <clears throat> kind of want to play Valkyrie just because of how giant we could make Voice of the Blessed in a single turn if uh, if they don't take care of Valkyrie. Tovalar, okay. Gross. Okay. Um, I think we block like this. Getting rid of that's good. To the bless, gain some life, gain some life, and uh, we'll do no attacks. And then we're kind of just gonna have to hope that Cosmos Elixir can carry us the, the rest of the way here. Cemetery Prowler, okay. For that, play Cosmos Elixir. Do no attacks. 
that on the bottom. I don't think we need that right now. What does this do? Whenever another werewolf card dies, draw a card. Okay, cool. Alright, so we play this and the Angel of Unity. Get some life. Trepid Adversary. Auto pay. Swinging for that much. And I think we've got the game. If I had to guess. They will get to draw a bit, but we're at such a high life total now that I think we should be able to take them down. Got a 10-5 Trampler. Gross, first of all. Um, Trample Haste. Is there anything else attacking? So what can we do to add value to this? We could do like this right here. Let's see. Alright, let's try this out. That way we just gain a whole bunch of life here. Alright, and then I think we just swing in for lethal, right? GG. <laughs> oh man. Let's go. Beautiful, beautiful. That was sick. Uh, that was exactly showcases the power of this deck, but you know, we're going against a pretty aggro deck, which at times you can either go let's play a control deck or you have to actually out aggro them. And Mono White does so well with that, especially with Voice of the Blessed. So GG, opponent. Not a great hand, but not awful, because we do have these two, so we'll hold on to it and just see kind of what we draw into. Play planes, we could potentially get that third and fourth land, and then all of a sudden this becomes pretty powerful. Tenacious Pup. I see a lot of people playing Tenacious Pup, a lot of uh, mono green, uh, green red. Because Tenacious Pup does provide so much value, because the next creature that pops out is going to be huge. Oh, okay, so we got a little, I guess like a Simic deck. Should be interesting. Alright, we'll play second Impassioned Orator, and uh, yeah, I think we'll just do no attacks. Just in case the opponent has like Snake Skin Veil, though, it doesn't look like they necessarily would have it. Bayou Grauf. Alright. Sweet. That's gonna be kind of scary. Uh, let's go and play an Inquisitor Captain. Let's see what we can find out of the library. The good old library. Sweet. Uh, let's put the Thalia out. We do no attacks. Inquisitor Captain would be good with like teleportation circle, I feel like. Is super busted. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have to see what we can do here. Honestly, I might just take the six. The backswing for them is a lot worse, I would imagine. Okay. Um, let's do this. Let's play a little intrepid action. But it probably has like a bounce spell or something like that. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, that was um once we get to that point we're we're like in value town, so we're gonna get a lot of cool cards. Pretty thick board here, so yep, GG opponent. So Slayers, what are you guys thinking about alchemy so far? Are you guys finding the same kind of issues that a lot of people are having where it's just too close to the last set? So you're having to spend even more wild cards, which is pretty pricey, not gonna lie. Even for a content creator like myself, it is, it is kind of expensive. Wild card wise, at least. Okay. Um, you know, I'd love to have my payoff cards that really get bumped up by life, but uh, I think this will have to do. Angel of Unity is just such a, such a house, like... 
being able to give the a creature plus one plus one right out the gate um, or even multiple plus one plus ones is just beautiful okay so opponent is on Azorius that's gross you hate to see it um I think we play hallowed priest here and let's just get the uh the good times rolling swing for one opponent can have uh, I had to guess doom scar is maybe what they foretold but maybe not um let's play an angel of unity here and i'll start bumping up our uh i guess the second angel of unity would be fine and we'll just swing in for four here now they can start um doom scarring how did we know always a fun card to have Okay, um, let's go ahead and play Angel of Unity. Give our Righteous Valkyrie a little juice, and uh, I might, might as well just play a Luminous Phantom here as well. Give uh, Righteous Valkyrie a little bit more juice. Faithful Mending, okay. Onan is just going to be controlling their way through this, and uh, it's going to it's going to be a pain in the ass, but Mono White has the potential to do some pretty interesting things. Okay, so we've got Fierce Retribution. Key to the Archive, okay. This is going to be kind of scary. Key to the Archive has a lot of strong spells, if I recall. Alright, um, so I think what we do is... Intrepid. Knowing that there's probably probably Doomscar coming up, wouldn't hurt to get a couple of lands, maybe a Faceless Haven, so we can Book of Exalted Deeds here. But uh, I'm not going to be too picky. We're just going to have to see what the opponent's got going on. Geist Channeler, okay. And to choose an instant or sorcery card in their hands, then it costs two less. Fun, fun times. Day of Judgment. Okay, sweet. Beautiful. Something like an indestructible threat would be super cool in here. Um, let's play a... What do we want to play here? Um, I guess let's play a Righteous Valkyrie and let's draw out like some kind of counterspell. So that's... Go next. We may have to just rely on um, Righteous Valkyrie here. Divide by zero. Okay, sweet. So opponent divides by zero. Sounds good. So that is two divide by zeros in the yard, which is, from what I can tell, probably pretty good for us. Nice channeler. Okay, sweet. Now I think they get to refill their hand. Oh, they get to draw two. Okay. Um, let's just go and play this out. And let's play an Angel of Unity out. Sure. Go and put this on there. They get to look at the top three cards, put one of them into their hand. Okay, so they have some action. Um, if they don't have like an instant speed, Destruction spell, we might be okay with Faceless Haven. Discover the formula. Okay, gross. Alright, so untapped land could be good. Let me see. What does this do? They get to untap a land. Alright. Well, what do you think the chances are that the opponents... Um, does anything to our Faceless Haven here. Okay, so that goes back. That's fine. Okay. Swing on here. Only time will tell. 
I'm assuming Doomscar is probably in here somewhere. Okay. I got a little Teferi action going on. This is a serious situation. We can still have a little fun. And so Need some life. Time only flows in one direction. Time only flies in one direction. <laughs> Okay. Gross. Yeah, hate to see it. Okay, uh, so what can we do here? Um, we could play this, and that puts us in quite a bit of risk, I think. Um, it just gets destroyed, basically. I guess we'll swing in on Tef. And, uh, yeah, sure, why not? I'll put out uh, an Orator here. Oh! <laughs> oh, man. Alright, so... Control game strong for the opponent, yes. Wizard Spellbook. Fun times. Alright, so what is this? Exile target instant sorcery card from a graveyard, roll d20. Either copy that card and cast it. Hmm, okay. So what did they exile? Discover the formula, okay. Give me a moment. Okay, opponent gains some life with Tef. Good old Tef. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, but a device by zero. And a reduced to memory. Okay. Um go play Book of Exalted Deeds. And uh We'll we'll replay Impassioned War Tour, sure. Can we beat the main control deck, guys? Can we beat them? Okay. So let's see how this works here. Uh, exile target, activate only as a sorcery. So can they only cast the copy on that turn, or can they like forever cast these copies? Oh, I guess that answers that. They forever can cast the copies. I've got some time. Faithful Mending. Alright, so... <laughs> this is looking pretty rough. Not gonna lie. Um, Okie dokie. Snow covered planes into play. One's really thinking on this. Mm hmm. Okay. And Impassioned Orator. Let's go. Let's go, Impassioned Orator. Take us home. <laughs> Take me home, Impassioned O. <laughs> oh, man. Alright, Impassioned O. So there is a very slight chance that we could win if I get like two more planes. I think I could Book of Exalted Deeds on the same turn this is being played. But it's kind of a long shot. Oh, okay. What? The opponent... What? I feel like the opponent had that one in hand. Maybe uh, maybe mom called and it's time for dinner. <laughs> All right, well, GG, uh, nonetheless, NH Hunter. I feel like I'm not sure what was going on there, but maybe they were just like, well, I don't know if I can win in 17 turns. Who knows? All right, well, GG. Code Red. 
Mountain Dew Code Red is the name. <laughs> All right, uh, sure, we'll keep this one. We'll keep it because our little doggy's sleeping. Play planes. Pass the turn. All right, opponents on some island, island shenanigans, I guess. Play intrepid adversary. A little life gain creature out here. Could see some fading hope action as well. But oh, how did we know? Um, sure. Let's do it again. Run it back. Run it back, homie. See if the opponent commits to anything here. Okay. Uh, let's play a Hallowed Priest. Let's see if we can get another Fading Hope out of their hand. I think the more Fading Hopes and Divide by Zeros we get out of their hand, the better. Because um, we do want to ensure that we are getting rid of those threats, right? Because especially when it's a blue deck, like they're aren't necessarily as many threats to pull from. Okay. This sweet. This sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay, uh, so let's go and play Thalia. Swing for one. Love to see some Marna. Alright, opponent. You gonna play your uh, th three point environmental science? Nope. No three minute environmental sciences for them. We're just swinging full steam ahead for three, then. Well, damn. That is a thing. I don't think we've got it, guys. I don't think we've got it at all, in fact. Alright, um... <laughs> uh, so what do we want to play in place of that? Um, we can go... Valkyrie? At this point, we just need lands. Lands are good. Lands make me feel so good. Better take seven. Gross. Hate to see it. Um, do we just play another threat out? This might just be hopeless. And we do no attacks. Opponent considers. Damn, Holebreaker came out super early there. Holebreaker costs, what, seven? How do you get seven right away? I guess this. Yeah, that's actually really good. Damn. Okay. Um, no, this isn't a good hand, but it is a hand. And it's got a lot of lands, which is a hand with a lot of lands. Uh, yeah, that's it's fine. It's turn two, we could Intrepid. Turn three, we could... Uh, we can maybe do some work as well. I'll play it out. Get rid of the burn spell on the opponent's hand, maybe. No burn spell. Okay. Now's the burn spell. Okay, sweet. Alright, let's play Luminarch. Voice of the Bless. And I guess the only thing we're looking forward to is getting rid of a dragon fire or something like that from the opponent's hand. All right, we'll do no blocks. Play that. Play that. You, I've definitely been seeing this deck a lot too, for sure. Um, super aggro. You know, they have uh, the little squirrel guy who gives the creature like a huge buff when it enters, like the next cre creature you you cast. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of craziness going on with that. Being able to refill your hand is going to be harsh for us. Alright, let's play Angel of Unity. Sure. Why not? And that. Go next. No attacks on the turn. And I'll just uh, block or kill whatever I gotta do to get through. You can see a dragon fire coming out here. Dragon fire! Really, at this point, Faceless Haven's pretty saucy. Okay, uh, so what do we want to do about this? 
we could probably just go and trade off right here and kill. Or... We could go here. This has trample, so... Does this have trample too? This does not have trample, so we could just trade off right here. Opponent is in Value Town, USA here. Unfort. Faceless Haven would be sick though. Uh, uh, Faceless Haven, anyone? Uh, okay. No Faceless Haven. Uh, sure. I'll swing in for six. One has got so much value though, it's almost disgusting the amount of value the opponent has. I would say the best part is that our Voice of the Blessed is pretty thick, so we can kill something, which is pretty nice. Like whatever swings in is going to die, at least one thing is going to die. Okay. Hmm. Okay. We'll do this. Swing in. Put that on the bottom. Don't want that. I'll take a Faceless Haven, though. I'll take a Faceless Haven, please. I don't know that there's something that can take down a 7-7. It would have to be like a multitude of spells, probably. Um, but at this point, I'm just using this as blockers. I mean, they have to swing in with everything here. They have to kill Voice of... Okay. I think they're dead. The two Tovalars, or the that Tovalar right there, is doing work. GG. <laughs> yes. I feel like they could have won there so easily if they had just put in that kind of pressure, but um, having Voice of the Blessed be a 7-7 seven, seven Vigilance definitely does so much work there, even though we were just flooding out like crazy. Yeah, they could have like really, I think, done a whole lot more damage there, but we did have three blockers, so GG, opponent. Rachel Maddow. <laughs> okay. Um, sure. Why not? We're going first. Three lands. When it says hello, gonna put a intrepid out there. We do have enough to cosmos eventually, which is pretty sick. Eventually, that is. All right, so we go here, sure, and we'll do no tax. Brutal, quite brutal. All right, so we get rid of that. Alright, we need no blocks. Take two. Okay, um... Let's do the Righteous first. And I think I'll swing in. Sweet. Gain some of that sweet, sweet HP. Okay. Gross. Hate to see it. Um... Sure. Let's go in Inquisitor Captain. We might pull out something that likes life gain here. Uh, Hallow Priest is not bad. Angel of Unity is not bad either. Let's grab the Angel of Unity. Put one of them onto the battlefield. Sure. Swing in for three. Oh, opponent's got their own Inquisitor. How inquisitive. Damn. Such luck. Such luck there is. Okay. They might consider taking out my captain just because it's such a good blocker. Angel of Unity is also a pretty decent blocker as well though, so I don't think they'll be swinging in, which is so gravy. Um, I think we could just play out Cosmos. We'll do no attacks. Just gain some life. I'll take that. That's not bad. It's not bad at all.
Okay, uh, Inquisitor Captain or that. This doesn't have anything special, just Vigilance, right? We do no blocks here. I'll take it. Got a Righteous Valkyrie. And one of these bad boys, sure. No attacks. Uh, don't need another one of those, I think. Love to get something like Voice of the Blessed. Um, just some way to get us really oh, develop our board state a lot more. Okay. Um, is there any benefit to blocking here? I don't think there is. We just do no blocks. That's fine. Illuminarch Aspirant. Gross. So now they get some double pumps here, which is super gross. You hate to see it. Alright, I'm gonna play... Let's go and crack this. Draw a card, see what we can find. Alright, that's not too bad. And... I think we could swing in here safely. Could swing in. Uh, sure, why not? Let's do it. Um, oh, that would be absolutely bonkers if we did like double impassioned orator. I want to get my payoff cards though, like ASAP. Okay, something in their hand has lifelink now. Could be super scary. Okay, um,. I'll double block here and do a trade. Need some of our sweet, sweet life back. Okay, um... Go... Orator here. And three. It's intrepid. Auto pay. <laughs> okay. These thick old angels just cannot be stopped. <laughs> oh man. That was so beautiful. Like aerial assault is definitely something that this mono white is has some trouble dealing with, but it was uh, it was a good game. GG opponent. So the reason to keep three lands is pretty big. Getting into Inquisitor Captain is not bad either, so hold on to it. Oh, we'll hold on. Pet the Sleeping Doggo. Falcon Wrath. Gross. You hate to see it. Alright, we'll play Passion Orator. No attacks. Opponent could just burn us out. Oh, do you know blocks? Going Righteous Valkyrie here. See what the opponent destroys. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter to me. In life, and uh, sure, I'll swing in. I don't swing in, lad. Righteous Valkyrie is awesome because it's just safe from most of the early turn burn spells. Like two damage is just like <laughs> it's it's nothing too crazy. Especially when something like Inquisitor Captain could pull another Valkyrie for us, which is absolutely nuts, by the way. Um I think we're just getting Inquisitor Captain here. Just because of how thick that is. Oh beautiful. Alright, so we could take this right here. And we'll swing in for two. So now their uh, non-creature spells cost a little bit more, which is good for us. Ren, okay, sure. And I'll take two. And that voice of the bless makes us extra thick right here. Bring in right here. And uh, yeah, sure, why not? 
Let's see opponent as a sweeper. I think we've I think we're we're doing the work. We're doing the Lord's work here <laughs> with this deck. Hey, my turn. Uh sure. Let's play Cosmos Elixir. Need a bit of life. And we can start drawing cards too, which is super sick. So next. And yeah, this time we're gonna go no attacks, end the turn. Draw a card, okay. Extra planes, not super thrilled about that, but it is what it is. Put us in their land drops. Showdown, okay, sweet. Got a bunch of stuff that they can't really cast right now, I think. Beautiful, beautiful. Planes. I think this might get us to 27. Let's see. Will it? Yes, right? No, not quite. Okay, but we do get to swing in. It's beautiful. Swing for six. And the turn. Draw some more. We are in value town now, boys and girls. Um, every spell they cast does give a creature plus one plus one, which could be scary, potentially. Okay, so opponent's really planning on taking um, Voice of the Blessed down, which um, could be scary, but I think the real deal is the fact that once we get to 27 uh, life, we're actually in amazingly good shape. Okay, so we lose our Voice of the Blessed, which is unfortunate. Okay. <laughs> Alright. So, no. Uh, yeah, we do no blocks here. My turn. Oh, so good. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely getting to 27 here. Ha <laughs> ha Let's go. Goes out to one. Beautiful. Do they have 10 damage worth of stuff, though, is the question. Okay. I mean, they might. They have they have definitely enough to punish... Uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> they don't. Oh, man. That felt so good. Uh, this, is a, this is looking like a pretty aggro, like a really fast aggro deck, but um, I think maybe, just if you guys can imagine, this is probably one of the more powerful mono white decks that I've played, to be honest. This is like one that I would use to rank up. Just because Voice of the Blessed does get out of hand really quickly, the inclusion of Inquisitor Captain has been so great in this deck, and um, yeah, I... I don't know. I think this is a really good place to end today's video just because it really showcases why it's so powerful. And uh, yeah, let's get into the deck breakdown right now. All right, Slayers, I think this is the perfect place to end today's video. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think Mono White Life Gain is definitely one of the most powerful decks right now in Alchemy. It takes down a lot of different decks. And just like with most Mono White Life Gain decks, it just snowballs so quickly because of the low curve to cast spells. And then the inclusion of these brand new spells from Alchemy actually make the deck even more powerful somehow, which is so good. Angel of Unity is a total blast to play. I love that it gives your creatures plus one plus one in your hand. I mean, you can come out of the gate with like a two mana Voice of the Blessed with like one or more plus one plus one counters on it, making it extra safe just in case. So yeah, Angel of Unity does a lot of work, has life link too. And then Inquisitor Captain did so much work and I think it might be worth it. Let's say if you didn't want to use the Book of Exalted Deeds Faceless Haven combo to just sub that in for two more Inquisitor Captain 
captains because this card is an absolute house. Definitely worth the rare wild cards if you are planning to play mono white or a white deck that has uh, creatures that you can pull from your library to seek. So yeah, super cool, super powerful. I really enjoyed this deck as far as if you should build it. Um, if you have the cards, I think it's worth it. I think this is a deck that is going to be powerful regardless of which format you're playing. Mono white just has been powerful for a really long time and for good reason. There's a lot of really powerful white cards. But yeah, easy peasy. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And if you did, please remember to chop that like and subscribe button for me because it does help me out so, so much, guys. It helps my channel grow and we are getting ever so close to the thousand subscriber mark, which is crazy. It feels like it's been a million years, but it also feels like we just started posting consistently this year. So getting to that mark feels like quite the accomplishment for me. So let's get there. Thank you guys again so, so much for taking the time out of your day to check this one out. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to smash that like button below and to help you stay up to date with my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks again. Have a great day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, Slayers.